When it came to Vietnam War era shooters, it was hard to top a game like Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. It had everything. There was a ton to like about it. It was realistic without going over the top and being overly punishing. It encouraged team play and cooperation. There was a lot to learn about it. It had a pretty good skill ceiling, but new players could still get into it, especially on easier maps. There were several factions, player customization, free updates funded by cosmetic packs that gave you everything when you bought them, which was nice, didn't have to buy loot crates or whatever. And I mean, there was even a free additional mode for green army men, along with mod support. Nothing could go wrong until the developers decided to cut development on it entirely, lock most of green army men behind a paywall, not finish some of the stuff that was in the game, like the MG34, and then just poured it over very sloppily to the Epic Games Store and break the voiceovers for a very long time. It sucked. Riding Swarm 2 was a great game. It's a pretty good game now. But it just isn't the same. Fortunately, there are still great Vietnam War games out there. There are good ones coming up, like the upcoming Military Conflict Vietnam, a source mod that's more like Bay of Defeat. But there's also a really good Battlefield-themed mod that really encompasses what Rising Storm 2 was and should be now. And that is Battlefield 2, Eve of Destruction 2, a mod set not only in the Vietnam War, but also in the preceding conflict, the Indochina War. There's a ton of content for it, a ton of factions, plenty of weapons, and overall it's just a big labor of love. There's a throwback to when people made mods just because they could, and developers really supported them in that effort. Eve of Destruction 2 is the follow-up to the original Battlefield 1942 mod, in this case made within Battlefield 2 and using that game as a base for it. It's mostly set within the Vietnam War itself from 1964 to 1975, but there are also levels that are set in the Indochina War from 1946 to 1954. Variety is the name of the game with Eve of Destruction. There are plenty 
of opportunities for the game to mix things up, and it takes advantage of that. There are plenty of levels that come with the base mod, and the factions they feature are really varied in a number of unexpected ways. You've got your usual U.S. Army and Viet Cong, in addition to the NVA and the Arvin, the Australians, and then you go a step further, they even have the Mac V Sog Special Forces on some maps. And on top of that, some maps have different kits and different soldier models depending on what faction you're on. So sometimes you'll have female soldiers on the Viet Cong or NVA side, or you'll have special forces loadouts on the South Vietnam side. And of course, you go even further back with the Indochina levels, which feature the French versus the Viet Minh, complete with air appropriate guns and really good voice acting on the French side. Vietnamese voice acting is good too, but you can tell that it's definitely not at the same level of professionalism as the existing English ones or Australian ones. I'm not sure if the French one came from another international version of Battlefield 2, but it sounds really official. And depending on what era you're in, there are different weapons available. Your usual M16s, AKs, M1911 pistols. It depends on what faction you're playing as too, and what map you're playing, because that can really change it up. So Australians have access to the FAL. The Arvin units use a lot of World War II era guns. The Viet Cong use slightly more dated weapons than the NVA. And Mac V Sog have some really unique weapons, like camouflage versions of existing guns, and more obscure stuff like the T223, the American version of the HK33 assault rifle. All that combined means that you're gonna have a lot of unique experiences playing it. The variety is really rewarding, and it encourages you to go back and try out levels in different settings and tried out different factions. And of course, it's nice that the maps have bot support. Almost all of them do. I'm not sure if there are still servers running for it, but the bots are competent, and you can set their difficulty. If you go into the game settings, you can even change up the number of bots that spawn. If you'd like to, you can put up to 63 for a full-blown battle. And there are error-appropriate vehicles as well. The bots aren't always competent with them, but they do a pretty good job of it. I really like how it sort of reflects the grittiness of the Vietnam War with the gameplay. You don't have as much ammunition on hand, so you really have to make do with what you're given. And this also means that even though the heavy gunner has fewer pieces of equipment, but the ammunition box he has is a godsend when you're running low on stuff, and you'll need it. There are two assault classes, one more based on reconnaissance, the other based more on fighting. They have different weapons and things of that sort. Some of your equipment is a little more primitive because it's Vietnam. Others are more war crime-esque, like the white phosphorus grenade that the recon class has. Others are spaced out more. If I remember correctly, they're, uh, the Spec Ops class doesn't have the remote mines like before. And I think the engineer has uh, timed explosives depending on what faction you're on. The Viet Cong, and to a lesser extent the NVA, don't have as modern weapons as the American side, but they make up for it with good variety and, generally speaking, dealing more damage. But it's also kind of hampered by Battlefield 2's mechanics. People who have played the base game could probably recognize that it's very easy to be inaccurate in that game, even in situations where you should be hitting enemies. Some guns are generally more accurate than others but it's still a situation where they can be struggling to hit enemies that are a reasonable distance away with a gun that should be able to hit them. I would also say that it's kind of odd that there are two American voices used alongside each other. You can tell the difference between them, and. 
I think I get why, because the American lines, the new ones, are supposed to reflect stuff that are exclusive to the Vietnam scenarios. Like calling out northern controlled helicopters and stuff of that sort. Go, go! It can stand out a bit, but it isn't exactly, like, it doesn't take away from the experience. Same with the Northern Vietnamese forces occasionally speaking Chinese. It's not that much of a stretch, considering how supplies and logistics came from China to North Vietnam during that part of the war. It wouldn't be impossible to say that there would be some Chinese speakers among them. The addition of female soldiers is cool, but I don't know if they really had exclusive voices outside of the death sounds. And it's also neat how the Viet Cong have more unique player models with more civilian-like outfits because of them being more of a guerrilla force. The French levels are nice, the ones in Indochina, but they aren't really used as much. I guess that would be... One of my critiques about the mod is that it does kind of underuse its concepts. For the most part, the vast majority of levels are going to be U.S. Army versus Viet Cong, with some variations on what weapons you have on hand, what soldiers will appear for the Viet Cong side, whether the U.S. will be Mac V. Sog or what. And that's just, it's kind of a waste when... The Arvin and Australians and NVA are right there and ready to use. Even in some maps where it explicitly says you're fighting the NVA, it just puts the Viet Cong there instead. Some of the weapons, some of the really nice weapons actually, ones with variety, are locked behind the unlock system of the game. In Battlefield 2, you unlock weapons through online play and ranking up. Which is fine and all, but you can't do that in single player. And you can't really do that in multiplayer, because not many people play it. And I don't even think you can access those in single player anyway. So they kind of go to waste. And it's a shame because there are some redundant loadouts by default. And would benefit from adding stuff like the shotgun to the Southern Vietnamese forces or adding something like the Mosin Nagant to the Viet Cong or Viet Minh. I ended up doing just that on my end. I went around and modified some of the kits and some of the levels to include the lesser used factions and spread them out more. I mean, I just thought it was a nice addition and it let me appreciate the effort put into these other factions. It let them shine outside of the few levels they're actually in. Speaking of levels, there's a good variety. I like how many they have, well over a dozen. Some of them are ports from Battlefield 2, but they fit well. Especially stuff like Song Hua Stalemate, which is a really fun map that is converted to be like a battle of Mac V Sog against the Viet Cong along the border of South and North Vietnam. Those are, fit well into the setting of the Vietnam War, in addition to the custom levels that are either recreated from the first Eve of Destruction mod, or made for this mod. Plenty to choose from. I would say, though, that there were a surprising number that were broken that would just crash the game when chosen. I had to go through and delete several levels because they just wouldn't load. I'm not sure what caused it and why. Ones that didn't have a map picture and didn't have a description were usually the ones that were broken. I even downloaded the hotfix and it didn't really do anything about it. I'm not sure if it just fixed something else or if it's an issue on my end or what. On the plus side, there's some variety in the types of levels you have. Aside from the usual conquest double assault, where it's two teams going at it to take control of territories, or the conquest maps where the enemy already controls the area, and one team has an uncapturable spawn point moving from. There are actually some deathmatch levels, where it's set in like a 
dark jungle or a city under siege and you're spawning around random points trying to keep your allies alive and kill enemies to wear down the reinforcement counter it's cool and it's really unique it's a situation where you really see the weapon sets of evo destruction shine stuff like the limited ammo count really comes up so you'll often have to scramble for enemy weapons or fallen allied kits to keep yourself fighting. It's a neat concept and it works well with the chaos of the war. Your levels are usually like in jungles as well as in cities, urban environments, in smaller towns as well. There are a variety of settings, stuff that you could normally expect from a Vietnam War game and other more uh, interesting approaches, like one that's set along some train tracks where an ambush is going to happen. And there are some references to classic Vietnam War movies, of course, like We Were Soldiers and Apocalypse Now with Charlie Don't Surf. They're cool. I like the additions to it. Overall, EVE Destruction has aged well. I mean, it's not like a modern FPS by any means. It still plays like a Battlefield 2 mod, but it's a polished Battlefield 2 mod. It embodies that idea of doing it for the art instead of for profit or for attention. It's a mod that really reflects the work put into Battlefield 2, and it shows just how much the creators of this mod enjoyed that game, that they put so much time and effort into tweaking it and adjusting it into this new scenario set in both the Indochina War and the Vietnam War. I'd honestly recommend giving it a shot. I mean, if you have Battlefield 2, I'm not sure how easy it is to get these days since it got taken off Steam. I would recommend downloading it. It works with the Steam version since you just need to put it in the mods folder of Battlefield 2. There are a few bonus levels that are listed on the mod DB page. I'd recommend giving them a shot. I remember them working pretty well also. And if anybody's interested, I could, I don't know, post the kit options that I set up for the game. But that, that's not really important. It feels like what Rising Storm 2 should be. It even has an MG34. But Rising Storm 2 couldn't do that for some reason. And it gives me hope for games like Military Conflict Vietnam, that they'll be able to do this complicated and brutal conflict justice with the way they depict it. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys give Eve of Destruction a shot. I've had a blast with it so far. And I really enjoy trying out each level and seeing what differences there are going to be with who I'll be up against and what I'll have at my disposal. So take care. Thanks for watching.